If you've been ill for a long time, then I'm sure you can appreciate Colin's reluctance to claim his recovery until it was well tested. Colin was sick for 17 years with ME-CFS and multiple chemical sensitivities. At his worst, he was bedbound for nine months and he shares some of his darkest times in this interview. His words were, I really felt like someone who was depleted and someone whose life is over at the end stage of life. Colin tried many, many treatments. He even tried mind over matter and attempted to just push with exercise. But of course, that was a recipe for disaster. Eventually, he found some kind of equilibrium where he could somewhat function in life as long as he curtailed every area of his life. I think anyone that has experienced ME-CFS and multiple chemical sensitivities can relate to his experience with this illness. Colin recovered using the ANS Rewire Education Program for Recovery from ME-CFS, fibromyalgia, POTS and related conditions. He didn't do much besides the program to recover and he credits some small dietary changes and the neural training portion of the program for his recovery. So this interview doesn't have a lot of how-to content. But what it does have is it has a story of the human spirit. A story about coping with the darkest of times, about perseverance and about how to cope with the difficulties of relapses. Colin shares his advice and his message of hope that even without that silver bullet cure, recovery is possible. I hope this story gives you hope and that it uplifts you. It's great to have another recovery interview and today I am speaking with Colin from Chicago. Uh, how are you doing, Colin? I'm doing great, Dan. Awesome, awesome. Look, it's uh, lovely to connect with you again. Um, and uh, you know, today, let me, I guess the first question I'd like to ask is, did you actually see any of these kind of interviews or perhaps interviews on CFS Unraveled um, in, in the past before you, uh, when, when you were still ill? No, um, I never saw, I, I never saw an interview with anybody that recovered. I don't think I, there, there were, there are a couple of books out that were written by people yes. that recovered, uh, but not, not an interview. Okay, interesting. So let me ask you, um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your, your journey and, and when you uh, got ill and all this kind of thing, but if you never saw anyone else recover, did you come to a point where you thought maybe, were you thinking it was possible? Had, had, you, if you, had you ever heard of anyone who'd recovered? I mean, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I was pretty frustrated. Um but I, I think I always held out hope that things could be better. It, I don't know that I ever thought I could recover, but I, I did always hold out hope that, that things could be better. That I had some glimpses of better. Right. Uh, so. Right, because that's what happens when we're ill, isn't it? That sometimes we feel a bit better, then we feel a bit worse, then we feel a bit better. And it's sort of a bit of a roller coaster ride, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So Definitely a roller coaster. How long, I mean, how old were you? How long ago was it that you first started to get unwell? And, and what happened? Well, I was in my early 30s. Um, and I, I started out, I had uh, chronic sinus infections um, for a long time. I was dealing with that. And um, chronic sinus infections uh, come with uh, pretty severe fatigue. And... Um, but after the um, after I resolved the sinus infections, I, I realized you know I didn't have sinus infections, but I had this um, debilitating uh, fatigue and I call it malaise. You know, fatigue just doesn't do the suffering justice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm fatigued now and I love it. You know, it's like <laughs> I'm you know I'm tired. I'm going to go lay down and it's going to feel great. I'm going to rest up. You know, that's, that's fatigue, but you know, chronic fatigue, you know, you suffer from a real malaise, you know, the, the 
the fatigue is so intense. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, it is such a different experience, isn't it? I mean, um, uh, you know, people talk about it. This is why people often don't like the word chronic fatigue syndrome because, yeah. you know, well, it sounds like you're tired, you know? <laughs> Go have a yeah. sleep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, tiredness doesn't, doesn't really cover it. So, so what mm-hmm. happened then? Um, you went back to the doctor, I assume. Uh, what, 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 what happened? How did you end up uh, progressing with that? Well, uh, I was really disappointed that, um, you know, resolving the inf- sinus infections didn't resolve my illness. Uh, so I started looking, you know, looking for answers, tried uh, a couple doctors, and uh, eventually someone had suggested it might be chronic fatigue s- syndrome. And, right. uh, so then I started to pursue that path and um, and actually after the the sinus infections cleared up I felt a little better for a while but then I started to get things just started to go a lot worse and I just started to get um, more and more uh, fatigued and more and more weird symptoms like mm. You know the the sleep disruption. You know, not being able to get re- restful sleep goes hand in hand with the, with the fatigue, and so um, that got worse. Then you know, I got like weird eczema, and I, I was having um, herpes, cold sores flare up, um, and then I was having digestive problems and you mm. know chronic constipation, and so. Um, Things got a lot worse um, where I was I was able to get out of bed and get something to eat uh, three times a day but then uh, you know I just went back to bed and and laid there um, wow that's that's obviously very yeah. severe I mean how long were you in such a severe state for uh, I, well I was doing the get out of bed three times a day thing for about nine months. And, um, I can, I can, I can tell that year because you, you you look at my, uh, tax returns and it's like, I'm making a living. And then all of a sudden I, I, I just stop. Mm. I was self, I'm self-employed, always been self-employed. So it, uh, I just wasn't able to work that year. Were you um were you single at that time or were you married or no no luckily I was married uh, throughout this whole thing uh, luckily I've been married so what, what was your wife thinking I mean it must have been a shock to her yeah she was really understanding my wife has been really super understanding and compassionate and um, I th- I think it took a while for her to understand. Um, my limitations, um, but you know, eventually she 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 did. Um, I I wasn't able to, you know, I really wasn't able to do anything. I wasn't able to go out and be with friends, or you know, my wife is social. She has you know lots of friends, and you know, I, I just wasn't able to participate in that uh, very much. And, um, you know, vacations, you know, when we went on vacation, I would end up, you know, in the hotel room in bed, you know, for most of the vacation. And um, they, they were not, they were in no way fun for me. Uh, I, I was suffering and I would, I would just as much, I, I'd rather suffer at home without spending, you know, <laughs> a couple of grand to go somewhere and suffer, you know there um absolutely i i used to have the same experience and not only could i not afford the holidays already because i wasn't making yeah. any virtually any income but then yeah you'd go there and uh and i usually used to get worse um yeah uh and so yeah it it was no fun um and my first holiday then, where i didn't have that i have to say was a remarkable experience because suddenly could understand yeah. the motivation why my wife wanted to go all those years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 you want to be a good sport, you know. You want like, 
you're with yeah. a well person who wants to take a holiday, you know. And yeah. so you wouldn't want to deny them that, but at the same time, it's like it's really bit of a nightmare. Not a great idea. <laughs> Not a great idea at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, what were your doctors saying when you were like so ill? Did you still did you see the doctors during those particular that nine uh, month period? Yeah, yeah, you know, that, um, uh, yeah, that that was frustrating. Uh, Nobody had an answer for that. The answer for that was, well, you know, as soon as the the sinus infections clear up, you're going to feel great. You're going to feel fine. Mm. And um, so once they did clear up, I, I didn't feel great and I didn't feel fine. And um, and then it was back to square one trying to figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and so we're talking about, you know, months and then we're talking about a year. And then, I mean, what happens? Because you were ill a long time. Um, yeah. uh, what happens the year after, the year after that? How do you summarize 17 years? <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, that, that, that one, that nine month period was my worst, worst period. But after that, you know, I, I was, for several years, I was, um, you know, like 50% functional. And, and that, that had a, a pretty wide up and down. I, I would, I would, I would crash. Um, and then they would take me weeks or months to get back up to a 50% level, you know? So, mm. and, and a crash could occur because of lots of different things. You know, I, I exerted myself too much or I had a stressful experience or I ate something or, you know, or, you know, or it was Thursday, you know, mm. there, there was not, I used to explain this to people that there's an invisible wall. And I, when I hit that wall, I crash, but I never know where that wall is. That wall could be a, 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 a block in front of me, or it could be a couple inches in front of me. Mm. And, and I would drive myself crazy trying to figure out well, what did I do? What did I do that made me crash? You know, did I, I, I walked for two blocks and I should have walked for one uh, mm. or, you know, did I eat this or that or, you know, mm. sometimes it was obvious, you know, like, like, you know, um, I, I remember one time I was late for the movies and, um, I, I ran like two blocks to the movies and uh, and this was this was after I had been working to get well for probably 10 years and I was doing uh, you know moderately well but I ran two blocks to the movies and then that was it I was you know out for a month crazy and, yeah it's funny, uh, you know, obviously I had the illness for like seven years and I speak to people with the illness every day. And the way you just put that, it just puts it back into context, just how crazy this whole experience is with this illness. Um, so a lot of uncertainty, so much uncertainty around it, you know? Yeah. So obviously, it, it, I mean, all, all those years, um, did you start to get other symptoms besides the ones that you mentioned? Uh, did you get pain or any other symptoms? You know, fortunately, I never uh, experienced muscle pain. Right. Uh, um, uh, and my symptoms were... Um, they didn't change over the years. They stayed sort of steady with the gut and the fatigue and the uh, the uh, depression. Sleep. Yeah. yeah I, I, well, in the beginning, I, I had like uh, really intense... Um, uh, adrenaline surges at night I'd have nightmares as a result of that so I'd, mm. I'd have nightmares that someone was in my house gonna kill me and I just wake up with my heart you know yeah. pounding out of my chest and um, uh, so it you know it every year was different I would say you know like every year what you know the, the flavor of misery was a little different and um, mm. uh, and I, I, and throughout that time I was always actively trying something I, I was actively trying something to get well mm -hmm. uh i mean 
there was no period there that I was not, you know, reading, talking to people, you know, talking to doctors, the healers, you know, uh, try anything. Uh, well, in in two minutes or less, what would how could you sum up? Because otherwise we could talk for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would, how would you sum up the things that you like? Some of the different things that you tried. Well, um, okay, so I tried. Uh, I don't remember the drug, but there's some drug. Uh, it's a innocuous, fairly innocuous drug around candida. So there's a Mm-hmm. There was a whole candida um, yeast overgrowth theory that uh, I, I did that. I dramatically altered my diet. Um, I tried, and then on the other spectrum, there was low low dose naltrexone, naltrexone, mm-hmm. um, which is like a brain drug. Um, what uh, happened, I went what to, happened when you tried that? Um, that. Um, I that felt like speed or something. Like I, I, I felt like I, I had cl- like uh, more mental acuity. I would say, um, but it didn't help with cr- the crashes or the. If anything, it kind of accelerated the crashes because I felt like I, I was okay mentally, and I had energy mentally, and then I. I would crash physically. Yeah, physically. Mm. But um okay. And and yeah. what what other things did you try? Um so and I try I, I tried acupuncture. Went to a chiropractor. I worked with for a long time I worked with uh, a naturopath with on uh, adrenal dysfunction and uh, I took a, a variety of supplements and stuff uh, around the adrenal dysfunction mm-hmm. um, that was that was helpful um, you know a lot of these things were helpful mm-hmm. they they um, provided some relief you know either short term or small amounts um, and uh, yeah yeah but but nothing lasting nothing lasting yeah mm-hmm. uh, I tried you know I tried gritting my teeth saying screw it and fighting my way forward like i i tried just i'm just gonna exercise it's like you don't have it I'm I'm, just yeah gonna i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna exercise you know i'm just I'll, I'll i'll through will of you know brute force i will exercise through the pain to the other side <laughs> uh that didn't work out too well i imagine uh, that didn't work out good at all no, <laughs> didn't work out so uh, yeah okay um, well okay and uh, okay and so yeah um, I mean what were you mentally and your wife I mean how did this whole experience change as months turn to years turn to decades uh, well I, I used to describe myself as a as a 75 year old man but I then I started to meet seventy-five-year-old men who were actually in way better shape than I was. So then I, that that analogy didn't really work. Right. Um, but I really did feel like someone who was depleted and whose life was over. You know, at, you know, at the end stage of life or something. How, how did you cope with this? I mean, what was your mental outlook through this? I mean, this is clearly a, a harrowing experience yeah it is it, it um, I remember uh, someone very close to me saying um, I think you're depressed mm. and I got so angry and I wasn't angry at them personally but I just got angry, and I thought, you know, I, you're damn right, I'm depressed. I am, am not happy. I am so, I, I, I am so angry that look at me, you know, I'm, I, I'm in at this time I was in my late thirties, and look at my life, you know, look how limited my life is, um, and 
if this were happening to you, you'd be depressed too. Mm. And I, the depression, I don't even like to call it depression though, because it's, it's like, uh, what's his, uh, Dr. Neville from the Climber Institute, he used to talk about depression. He'd say, people with chronic fatigue, uh, um, you can tell if they're clinically depressed or not by, I'm paraphrasing what he says, but if, by asking them what they want to do when they recover. I said, most people with chronic fatigue have got a long list of things they're chomping at the bit to get back to or, or, or to, comp- to, to, to get active in in life. And someone who's depressed really has lost their, their ambition mm. for life. Someone who's clinically depressed. And mm. So I, I feel like I, I, I fell in that first group where I am, I'm, I'm depressed about my, my circumstances here, but I'm not, I haven't lost hope. I haven't lost my ambition. Mm. I, t- I totally, I, I totally appreciate your distinction. Um, yeah. Okay, so, um, and I, uh, but, one of the other things that, that I that I did, I my sleep, uh, at one period my sleep uh, became so uh, deprived uh, that I I went to an MD and I I literally begged him for some sleep medication. Because it, it had been four days, and I felt like I had not slept in four days. Um, and I, I begged him for sleep medication, and, and he gave me uh, Ambien. And when I took Ambien, I got a taste of what clinical depression must really feel like. Because right. I, I, was, I, I was walking down the street, and I noticed that I, w- I was so lethargic, and and it had it had this dramatic, depressing effect on me. And I I got off the drug right away, but I, I had this sense of what it's like to be, you know, like truly truly depressed. You know, yes, like really without hope. You know, um, they say that the Eskimos have lots of different words for the word snow. Yeah, I think people with chronic fatigue syndrome have lots of words for the word fatigue, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because there's not just yeah. one type, is there? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There's yeah, right. so many different Funny. levels of, of that, and most people just in the real world, uh, uh, in, in the rest of the world, I should say, they just, they just, they just know tired. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's why I really, I really do prefer the word malaise, because I, I think yes. malaise. Malaise is, you know, that feeling when you're getting the flu and you don't know you're getting the flu, but you mm. just feel rotten. And, Did yeah. you used to get that toxic feeling as well? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you had uh, sensitivities to foods and, and different things? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, was, I, I like to say I was allergic to everything. Right. Like what kind of things? Uh, well, any, like anything airborne, dust, perfume, cleaning yes uh materials and then uh you know the food sensitivities uh it would just mess with your gut when you had different foods uh or give you a flare up yeah give me a flare up you know mm. and um uh would any particular offensive foods um wheat mm. uh dairy right. um okay yeah and um <clears throat> with the uh different different allergies and things again would you get a flare up or would you just start to get an allergic reaction uh they they'd make me uh more they'd make me more uh, fatigued and brain fogged right so so a flare up yeah yeah did you ever experience even just the smells would bother you or lights or things like this or, or noisy environments uh yeah definitely uh noisy environments mm-hmm. um and uh yeah i i, I had to um i couldn 't be in crowds you know too much uh you know there's also there's i i have mentioned like the, an underlying anxiety too when you I, I think part of it is, you know, not sleeping. Um, you know, you 
you build an anxiety, a level of anxiety. And, mm -hmm. um, and so the noises and crowds and, and mm -hmm. um, All stressful sort of situations things. like that. Yeah. Are, are, uh, but you didn't get like an issue where you would smell like petrol or perfume and it'd give you a flare up or something like that. You wouldn't, didn't get like chemical sensitivities per se. Uh, yeah, no, with a, well, with, yeah, with perfume, I, I could, you know, uh, or, or the um, uh, scented, you know, strongly scented household chemicals, they would, they would make me sneeze, my, my nose run, my eyes water, and then I would get stupid. Mm. It, it you would, would just a, get like brain fog. So. Yeah, it, it would have an, uh, it would just have yeah. an effect of, of making me stupid and tired. Yeah. Yeah. So did you start to really avoid those type of things? Did you start to really make sure you didn't get those cleaning products around and people with perfume and did it, did you start to worry about stuff like that? Uh, well, I, I asked, I asked my wife to, um, uh, not buy any of that stuff, not wear that stuff. Um, and, mm. uh, you know, I wasn't going out much, so I didn't have to worry about running into it, running into it. And, mm. um, so, uh, but now it's amazing that, you know, I, I, you know, I can walk into a department store where they're spraying all that stuff and it doesn't bother me at all. You know, that must I mean, be weird. It bothers me cause I don't, I don't, I don't love the smell yeah, yeah. of perfume to begin with, but, but it doesn't have any effect on my health, you know. Wow. Okay. Fa fantastic. So let me just um, take a side step and have a look at, you know, how did we get to these sinus infections? I mean, did anything happen in the 12 or 18 months leading up to this time? Well, I, I, had, uh, I had a very dirty job. I was breathing um, dust and mold and crap all day long. You know, I was working in... Uh, basements and attics and <clears throat> so I had a very dirty job and um, I didn't manage myself or my energy very well I, I went into these jobs like a kamikaze like I just I didn't eat lunch I didn't drink water I just worked and you know straight through till the job was done mm. and um uh, so that seemed to catch up with me eventually in the in the form of these these sinus infections. Yeah. Um, and um, there there I, there was there's one piece that I've left out here, and and that was uh, when all of this kind of came to a head. I had had a a, a very uh, emotional emotionally stressful period and um, uh, and that seemed that seemed to uh, turn everything uh, to irreversible like like I was no longer getting better when the sinus infection would clear up you know I didn't I, I stopped feeling better when the sinus infection would clear up you know? mm. and um, that seemed to be the, the turning point. Mm. Did you have any other physical things happening at that time? Uh, I mean obviously it was an emotional time you were exposed to a lot of um, physical stressful stuff by not eating and not drinking water and working hard in these basements but also being exposed to mold which we know mm. is very toxic and dust and all that. Did anything else happen? Any surgeries or accidents or were you training well, I had, or? No, I, well, I had sinus surgery uh, right. to correct the sinus infections, which is. And that basically uh, worked? Um, for the sinuses? Is that what stopped the sinus infections in the end? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if that was it or not. It, 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 it didn't seem, it, it seemed like I still had them. It wasn't until the, I changed the, the diet. Uh, and address the candida thing that they actually went away. Right. Okay. Interesting. Good. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, let me just ask another question with your symptoms. I mean, did the did you do anything with the sleep before you had your turning point? Did you do anything with the sleep that um, that helped? I mean, obviously it was terrible at one stage. You know. Yeah. Um. Or was no, it just I, like that for the all the time? Yeah. It, 
this uh, there was nothing that I did for the sleep uh, that helped until um, you know I took sleep me medications and um, you know the first one was Ambien and that was a disaster that was that was uh, the side effects were horrible mm. and um, and then I went to Lunesta um, uh, but then I went off those completely and I I I tried um, doing the supplements, um, uh, Serifos, uh, L, what is it, Phos phosphorylated L-serine, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and that that helped manage the sleep. That brought the um, the adrenaline surges that I was having at night and the nightmares. That that really uh, helped with that over time. Mm. What do you think your nightmares were related to that emotional stressful period? No, I think my nightmares were related to my body chemistry being so out of whack. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, okay. uh, so I, I feel like. So it wasn't like a PTSD type of thing. I, I don't. I don't think the no. uh, the nightmare came and then my heart raced. I think my heart raced yeah. because of adrenaline and that that kind of colored the nightmare. That's my okay. theory. Okay, so um, so you've tried all these things. You've gone to naturopaths. You've gone to acupuncture. You've uh, seen the many doctors. You've, uh, I mean, you know, you've contributed to the medical um, economy <laughs> for <laughs> sure have, yeah. for uh, uh, the best of two decades. Um, yeah. And then I guess your what was your turning point? I mean, what do you think happened that? Did you did you kind of give up on trying things, or were you just continuously trying things, or do you think there was a specific thing that was your turning point? Uh, what do you mean by turning point? I'm not sure. Well, I mean, I guess you're going down this road, you're trying things, nothing's working, and or working very little, and and then at some stage, you know, you end up recovering, and obviously the ANSPY mm -hmm. program was part of that, but I'm wondering. Was there anything that happened maybe before the ANS Rewire program that that started to change things or that changed your outlook or that you would try again? Or was mm -hmm. it that you just found the program? Yeah. Um, well, I had, I had some, uh, I would call, mini recoveries. Um, so, um, let's see. I was probably, like, after... Uh, probably after eight years, it was I. I had um, I had started to feel uh, good, you know, and um, and this was as a result of working with the the naturopath and trying um, the adrenal uh, stuff, and, and but also prior to that, I, I had been working on my my diet. And working with a chiropractor on nutritional stuff, so I had been uh, working on my health uh, for years, right? And 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 the the dietary changes were very uh, positive. Um, it wasn't like something happened overnight, but over time, that they, they were that you could feel positive effects. So I so then there was this period of time where I felt I felt pretty damn good. And um, I was so excited. Um, I went out and I jumped on my bike and I rode eight miles and to work and then eight miles back. And then the next day I woke up and I was like, I, it was all back. And mm. um, so what was that like? Oh, that was, uh, that was something I would come to know. <laughs> something I've become familiar with, uh, you know, just just an unbelievable deep disappointment, you know. Mm. And um, but I thought, well, it, it's possible, you know, because um, you were still feeling better. I mean, like there's value in the fact that you, okay, you weren't actually recovered because you couldn't actually yeah. go and do things. But if you didn't do things, you felt better, and you know, there's value in that, isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and and I and I and I didn't understand. I I just didn't understand 
um, at that point in time, I just didn't understand the um, the cruel the cruel nature of this disease, where you you have these ups and downs, you know, and and you get teased by these ups, then do you think, oh, it's all behind me now, and then it's not right. Mm. So, um, and that's 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 also the reason that I took a a good long time in uh, completing the ANS program and declaring recovery, you know, mm. because that. Still looking, at, we're still looking over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, just, just wanted to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, and I totally understand that, uh, having been through uh, all of that myself. Um, and then, what, you had that similar thing happen again. I mean, that was at eight years. Did you have that happen again down the track later on? Or uh, Yeah, I, there were a couple times where I felt, where I felt uh, very good for a short period of time. Yeah. And, um, uh, but as soon as you exerted yourself, you'd be back to yeah yeah yeah. And I guess that's really the key, isn't it, with knowing that you've recovered? Is that when you do exert yourself, and you then you continue to stay well, that's when you know you're yes. there. Well, that was it. That was it. So for me, the exercise was always kryptonite. Mm. Right. So me too. Um, so I I led a, I led a a fairly good manageable life with no exercise for a while you know mm. like and my symptoms would go up they'd go down but they it was all manageable you know mm. and mm. it wasn't it wasn't awful sometimes it was awful but not for too long you know mm. and uh so i thought i thought that was the future you know mm. and um and that's and, what happened well then uh then I met you. <laughs> okay, so you were doing okay at the time when you came across ANSVR. You weren't yeah, like in I dire myself, straits. Yeah, I considered myself seventy to eighty percent, you know, functional. Um, functional, you know, yeah. I, 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 as long as you didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as I didn't do anything fun, you know. Yeah. I could work. I could. I could. I could. You know, do my responsibilities. Yeah. As long as you um, didn't leave the house and, and do anything fun, you were good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, a, a, a real key turning point for me was being able to exercise. Yeah. And yeah. and um, and you know, I didn't really enjoy exercise when I was well. Mm. And but now that I can, you know, after being uh, denied it for so long, now I I love it. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, I'm a bit the same way, actually. I mean, I did enjoy sports, but. Uh, you no, know, not me. You, you, yeah, well, but you never would have seen me running down the road. And I distinctly remember doing that once when I had recovered. I started running, you know, and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I don't do that now. I've got a bit of a back challenge, but um, never was like something I wanted to do. And then suddenly it was yeah. like, just because I can, <laughs> it was yeah. suddenly uh, quite right. interesting. So tell me, um, for people who don't know what ANS Rewire is, I mean, how would you sum up what that is. I mean, what is ANS Rewire and how would that help you when you've tried all these other things? Well, ANS Rewire um, is a very comprehensive recovery program. So, um, I, and I, as far as I know, it's the it's the only, well, let me put it, I'll, I'll take responsibility for my experience here. So, in my searching and 17 years of searching for help um this is the only program that i came across that that had a comprehensive explanation and theory of what the disease is and what its mechanisms are and um and why it would affect every system in the body so when i when I came to the ANS Rewire program, I felt like I was already doing good work in a few different areas that need attention to recover. Uh, but the the big piece that there are two two pivotal pieces for me. One was the relationship of blood sugar to all of your symptoms and managing your blood blood sugar. 
and then the other piece was the neural uh, reprogramming and um, so those two pieces dropped in with all everything else that I was doing right mm. uh, made for uh, recovery so when, and, you, when uh, you heard the this uh, explanation of the uh, autonomic dysfunction um, I mean what how did you feel? What were your thoughts? Because, I mean, had people oh, ever suggested man. the illness was in your head or had people ever said that it was just because you're depressed that you're feeling like this? I mean, you know, sometimes people think you start talking about neural pathways. They start to think, oh, you're saying it's in my head or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah, well, I, I was definitely very sensitive to that because in the beginning that I got that a lot. You know that I was depressed, or you know this was uh, psychosomatic, or um, uh, but I, I also uh, believe you cannot your your body is not separate from your mind, uh, and and so there there is this important um, component uh, that involves your mind. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's that's how I uh, interpret this, and um, so that may, you know, I, I guess I think that if you've been told this is all in your head, uh, that's you're you're being dismissed. You're you're you know you're. Your physical sensations are are being dismissed as as you don't know what you're feeling. You don't know what your own body is feeling. Like it's not real. Yeah, like it's not real. And mm -hmm. so, uh, this is absolutely real and painful and debilitating. And there and and I, I believe there is uh, a a mind component to it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, what would you say, I mean, um, uh, was the most effective part of ANS Rewire for you? Um, I mean, what do you think was the most important part for your recovery? The, the neural, the neural reprogram was by far, yeah, the, that yeah. was, that, um, you know, when I focused on that, um, I, I just started to drop away all these other supports that I had you know I you know I was taking lots of supplements when I started the program to get to sleep and to manage um, uh, uh, you know uh, adrenal symptoms and stuff so um, I I dropped um, all kinds of stuff you know mm. just just allowing that part, the, the 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 neural reprogramming, to kind of reset everything. So, so how long did it take for you to to recover? And well, was I it started, like a linear process, or how did how did how did that happen? No, I don't. Well, it wasn't quite linear, uh, but I think in three months from starting the program, I started to see some positive results, mm -hmm. and. After a year, I wasn't taking anything. I wasn't taking any supports, and I felt pretty good. Um, but you know, having having been uh, disappointed in the past, you know, I I just wanted to test this thing out and um, make sure that it could fly, so to speak. And so, uh, I wanted. So, to, how did you test it with with exercise? A exercise was the big thing, yeah. And and my my, but my my really the 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 secret test that I held held in my back back pocket and 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 just hoped I might be able to do one day was was to start um, um, public speaking uh, right. because that to me is like super stressful. Yes. Um, and so. Uh, I thought if I can if I can start to do that and not have symptoms flare up, then I'll know I'm recovered. Yeah. And I haven't done public speaking yet, but I'm I'm putting myself in that place. And, yes. Uh, and so. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 all the attendant stress that you would expect is there. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Feeling stressed out? You haven't even done it yet. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, right. Just organizing <laughs> it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's the 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 anticipation that's worse than the uh, that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, okay, so so what happened then when you were exercising? Um, did you start to have little setbacks? Did you have like setbacks during your recovery or? Uh, yeah, I I did. I and mean, that's where the coaching uh, really came in handy, you know. Uh, mm. Mm. Uh, made a di- made a big difference. And um, I mean, did you start to think, hey, maybe this stuff isn't working? I mean, because you know you've been there before, hadn't you? You're feeling better, yeah. and then you go and do something, or you get stressed, or you get exercise, and then you get a flare up and you feel worse. So at this point, are you going, ah, uh, you know, here I am again, same old stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and my my you know my well. I, I think I think people with chronic fatigue could probably relate to this, but when you know when you have a flare up, there's a whole attendant mood and outlook. You know, suddenly the whole future changes. You know, what, like from possible to impossible. Yes. So you know, when you when you uh, I'll, I'll say this for 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 normal people so they can get it. When you feel like you're coming down with the flu, you don't have much ambition. You, 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 you're, you're not looking forward to the challenges of life. You're dreading them because you feel awful. And, you know, so, so flare ups, you know, they, they immediately, the future changes, you know, and, mm. and becomes impossible. Many, 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 many more things become impossible. And, Mm. Mm. impossible and so um so it was a little scary to you know to uh you know push this you know the the exercising and then have some symptoms and think oh shit you know this is this is going to be bad you know Mm. the wheels are falling off the wagon right that's what's going on so yeah so yeah but you persisted, yeah. You know? So I mean, how did that work? I mean, did you, did you, how could you go from that normal thing of I start to exercise and do and I get sick to now I can exercise and I don't get sick? How how did this happen? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's an invisible, subtle shift. Yeah, and and so and and it's So rather than um, um, engaging with that that old worldview, uh, there's you bring about a new worldview, a new possibility, a new expectation. So, did you start to see some of those shifts happening where you maybe bounced back from the flare up quicker, or the flare up wasn't as severe, or or maybe you did more? Like start doing a little bit of physical exercise, and you didn't get a flare up. Did those sort of things yeah. start creeping in into your experience? Yeah, yeah, and so, and uh, you know, and and really, you know, like little miracles. Yes. Like little miracles of like, okay, I just I rode my bike for ten miles. Now that should have a really bad result, and I feel like I'm going to have a really bad result. I feel pretty bad right now. And then turning that around, rather than that lasting for a week or two or a month, that lasting for the morning, you know. Yes. And then go on by afternoon. How did that make you feel? What were you thinking? Uh, magic. <laughs> magic. It's like you go from you know so. Uh, and I'm not being flippant. I really, it's like it's like magic to go from. From being uh, really fit- fatigued, malaise, brain fog to vitality, you know, mm. with because I always, you know, I've always had it equated with time. Like you need a lot of time to recover mm. from, and and you know, and like colds and flu, those do take time. They don't you don't get those in the morning and. And recover in the afternoon. Sure, but this this is different. 
Yeah. I mean, it's difficult to lose, you know, 15, 16, 17 years of 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 history and experience and then to say, well, I have a different experience now. Um, so, I mean, so after three months, you've started to feel some shifts, but I mean, how long was it till you were able to exercise and, and be okay? I mean, was that, how long did that take to happen? Was it a year? Was it uh, nine months? Was it? Well, I, I picked up the exercise like after six months, I think. So that, that's, yeah. um, and then after a year, I, I was full out, you know, like, uh, yeah. well, full out for me, I don't know, it's different for everybody, but, but I, I'm not, I was never a real exerciser, but you know, I'd ride my bike 10 miles a day, several days a week. And then on Saturdays I do like a 15 mile ride. So right. yeah. that's not a lot of riding for a bike rider, but for me, that's, that's a lot of riding, you know, sure. uh, that's a and lot you're of distance. working, you're working yes. full time, working full time. Yeah. And what about weekends going out? Going holidays? Uh, Are you doing any of these things? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, one one big milestone for me was to go to Hawaii. We we Hawaii is a long flight, uh, you know, from Chicago, and um, and in the past, you know, I wouldn't have been able to handle that that long a flight. And so, going to Hawaii was was a great milestone and celebration, and that was no problem at all. I had a great trip and the flight was, wasn't enjoyable, but it wouldn't have been enjoyable for anybody. It's boring. And, you know, and, um, but it was not a, uh, a trigger for mm. anything. Mm. Uh, so that was, was that, that must've been weird being on holiday and actually enjoying your time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What great. did your wife say to all this? I mean, I, I guess you must've had a different husband. Yeah, I you know the the changes are subtle over time, you know, and um, so uh, it's not like a eureka moment. Yes, uh, but I I think uh, you know she's really happy to have me um, fully available and engaged. You know, last year I um, I did a lot of work for her um, in her business, and uh, she was uh, buying her partner out of her business and. Um, I did a lot of the accounting and legal management of that process. And it was, that was something that was great to be able to do for her. And I wouldn't have been able to do that in the past. It would have been, mm. I wouldn't have had the energy or the brain capacity to, to do that. Mm. And mm. so, um, so that felt great to me that I could contribute you know, to her in that way. It's an amazing feeling, isn't it? Uh, so looking back, I mean, how long did it take you to recover then? I mean, it sounds like at 12 months you were doing everything. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that's probably uh, accurate. Like 12 months I was doing everything and, you know, still having um, like little flare-ups, you know. Uh, so I wouldn't say I was fully recovered okay. at 12 so, months. And that, those little flare-ups would be just some mild symptoms or some severe symptoms? Or how long would they last? Um, they were, they were, yeah, they were mild. Now, yeah, I, I couldn't call any of that severe. Okay, and, so, um, so mild so, symptoms, and how long would they last? Um, I don't know. Gosh, it's funny. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a taste for that. You know? Okay, but because you were saying that you were bouncing back, sort of after a day, like when you were exercising yeah. and things. So maybe yeah. they were just shorter. Yeah, they were definitely shorter. Yeah, uh, but yeah. can't remember exactly. Okay, that's yeah, fine. but see what happens. So here, here's the thing that happens: is, is it takes a while uh, because when you have that little flare-up, that whole outlook comes with it. That it takes a while for you to realize, oh, this isn't this isn't two weeks. This isn't a month. This is no. this could be an hour or an afternoon. You know, yeah. so it it takes a while for that. Uh, to to reprogram, so to speak, you know. It's like our uh, well, it's not interesting, isn't it? Because um, when we <laughs> when we sick so long, uh, our ability to accurately and objectively evaluate our experience becomes diminished, <laughs> too, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. And because you have such an emotional hang up on these experiences, 
Yeah, you you yeah. get the symptoms. It's not like an, a person who hasn't been chronically ill for two decades. Yeah, I mean a normal a person who hasn't had that experience, they get ill and they just go, oh, oh yeah, that's not good and whatever. And and but when you've been sick for two decades, it's like there's all this emotional baggage with it, and it we lose a bit of objectivity, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, if if, uh, if every time you open the door, somebody slaps you in the face for seventeen years, it takes a while to open the door without wincing, you know. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, in fact, I've told this. People may have heard this maybe before, but I've told the story often that one of the key things I, I did is rebalance my minerals uh, early on in my recovery. And when I used to stand up, and you know, I was like in my early thirties. Uh, mm -hmm. In the morning, so I couldn't stand up. Like I was like a like you said, a seventy-five year old man, but not like yeah. some seventy-five year old man. More like a, let's say a ninety-five year old man, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'd stand up and I couldn't even straighten up. It took take me like an hour or two to warm up or something, just so I could stand up straight. You know, I was so stiff and 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 sore and yeah, and um, yeah. and when I rebalanced my minerals and that went away, the the physical went away, but I was still doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be like, uh, like this. And I'd be walking out towards the kitchen to get a glass of water, you know, slowly. And then I go, hang on, uh, that's not there. You know, and you think you do that once and you'd be out of it, right? Because, yeah. But because you had this for so many years, it's like I was doing it every day. And I'm like, why do I keep walking around like. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm an old cripple when I can stand up straight. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I don't know how, how long it was. Maybe it was only a week or two. But you know, to mm -hmm. repeatedly go through the experience of walking around like you can't stand up straight when actually you can, it's, it, it was just like, what am I doing? You know. Uh, and and that's that's the impact I think having chronic illness for so long can can really have on you. Um, yeah, it's a practice. You know, it's like it's like this is, you know, your practice. Being no expectation for for a long time, you know, yeah. and and you know, there's there's you know every reason to be reacting that way. You know, you have evidence for it, of reinforced course. over time. So uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, those symptoms. I mean, I was I was having that problem for years. Yeah. You know, and and so the way I dealt with that problem was just ingrained in me, even when the problem was gone. Uh, yeah. I mean, it didn't take long. It didn't take years to get rid of it. I, I'm sure yeah. it only took like a, you know, maybe it was a week, maybe it's two. I, I don't really don't remember. It just seemed a long time because, you know, once you catch yourself doing it once, you think <laughs> you're over it. But it, it took, a, took a little time. Um, let me ask you then. So how long did it actually take for you to be fully recovered so that you weren't getting those little flare-ups, that you weren't getting, uh, you know, like the, the fatigue coming back and, 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 and the gut problems and when, when he exercised and all that sort of thing. Um, if it wasn't 12 months, I mean, if at 12 months you were in pretty good shape by the sound of it. Yeah. Um, do you think you reached full recovery maybe around 18 months? Is that maybe an appropriate time frame? Or do you think it was yeah, longer? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's probably, I think that's probably, let's see, so let's, so. Uh, so that would be, uh, and probably a little less than that. So probably more like fifteen months, right? Because uh, uh, you know, in the summer I was, you know, I was, you know, great. Yeah, ride my bike all the time, you know, and uh, yeah. Yes, yes, and um, but it still took you a little while to claim it. So I mean, I guess, and that's fine. But I guess you've had what another almost a year or another seven, uh, nine months since then now, where you have been recovered. Um, yeah, I mean, what's life like now as a recovered person? I mean, you're off to to Hawaii. You you're riding the bike. I mean, it must be a bit weird, no? Uh yeah. It's uh, well, it creates a it's a, a new problem to be honest with you. It's like, <laughs> what do you do with a life, uh, you know, that's been yeah. restrained for so long? Yeah, and um, you know, I'm really fortunate that. Um, I'm self-employed, and uh, I've, you know, one of the things that was a was a gift of chronic fatigue was that it forced me to uh, manage my life in a way that took care of me, and that I could 
you know, that I could use my time when I was able. And so that I still have that, which is really nice. And so, um, uh, but now I'm looking to the future really in a way that um, I couldn't for 17 years. So, you know, I, I have, I have energy that I didn't have before that wasn't possible for me to even think about having. And so now uh, I'm, I'm dreaming about what, what to do with uh, the next phase of my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I enjoy, um, I enjoy being in my body. I enjoy sleeping. You know, I, the, I think anybody with chronic fatigue can relate to, um, well, maybe not. I mean, uh, I had certainly forgotten what sleep felt like, um, real totally. sleep. And so, you know, real sleep is just such a beautiful gift and um, refreshing sleep. And so, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm happy. You know, I'm just happy. Mm. I'm in that bed, and I got you know, I got restful sleep, and it's uh, it, it's um, you, it's you, a happy place to take, go to. Yeah, you take that for granted, you know, and yeah, and you know, for that to come back, I, you know, I, I had forgotten a lot of things. I'd forgotten what it was like to be vital. You know, I I, I had forgotten what it felt like to really have energy. Mm. Um, you know, for me to work all day and then be able to go to uh, a public speaking event at night, you know, that's a great gift, you know, and that was not possible for me. And, mm. or, or I should say, I, I could do, I could have done that, uh, but it would have been a real horror, you know, it would have been uh, suffering, you know, a great suffering to push through and then there would be consequences for it. Mm. So, uh, you know, rediscovering vitality is, is really amazing. Did you do anything else as part of your recovery outside of the ANSVY program? Um, no, I, 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 I did, you know, all the things that I did that led up to the ANS recovery program. But once I was in the ANS program, if anything, I did less because I started to drop away. Um, like the supplements all, and things. All the supplements, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I've, I'm, I've saving thousands of dollars a year on supplements. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a crazy cost. Um, uh, let me ask you the other thing is, you know, since you've recovered, um, as we're yeah. sort of you know, leading up now to, to the closing part, I mean, I asked you earlier, I said, what do you think was the most important part of your recovery? And you said it was the brain training. But are there... Any special moments since you've recovered? I mean, obviously, there was the holiday you were mentioning when you were going to Y, but with any of these sort of moments, you know, literally a moment in time where you just went, wow, I can't believe I'm doing this since you've recovered? Uh, well, my first 15 mile bike ride uh, through the woods was really special. Yeah. Um, I just, it just felt so joyful and, um, yeah, it was it was fantastic, and yeah. knowing were you on your own or were you with someone else? I was on my own, and I yeah. just knowing that I was going to come back, and there were going to be no consequences for this. Um, yes, you know that were it was uh, really special. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I I totally relate to that. Look, um, the, the, um the, 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 I'll say like the 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 most um, impactful and miraculous things are the minor are, are they're they're almost they're invisible mm. you know I, I didn't climb mount everest but every day i wake up i feel vital and that is um that's way more fun i mean it's just so much fun to to be alive and not be suffering and not that's be in right. pain. that's right you know? Yeah, no, I, I I totally get you. Um, for people who are in the ANS Group Wire program, and what do you think is key? What do you think they have to do or get right in order to make their breakthrough? Well, I think that's probably 
different for for each individual um, but I, I think just the commitment to um, the commitment to uh, sticking it out and and getting there um, I know you know for me I, I had a lot of setbacks in the over the years a lot of disappointments um, and I think it's really important to leave those in the past and have hope that this time is your time mm. it was for me and uh, from you know from the explanation that um, you've given uh, is you know it makes perfect sense that people should should recover and mm. uh, and so you know what it is for each individual person I, I, I don't know mm. uh, that that's that's probably something that they need to discover but it's 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 here to be discovered and mm -hmm. um, you know they've got some great tools and some great support and be really worthwhile mm -hmm. to pursue it to the end my final question to you uh, in this uh, uh, epic interview is yeah. <laughs> what is your you know there's so many people they're lost and 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 they're struggling and they're, uh, they're having challenges with this illness. What is what is your best piece of advice that you'd like to give to someone listening to this interview today? Uh, my best piece of advice is don't give up hope and don't settle for suffering. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't, um, you know, wanna, uh, I went to see a chiropractor uh, very early on, and, uh, and I was thoroughly discouraged, and, um, I, and I told him so, and, and he said to me, he said, I have every reason to hope that you can recover from this. And that made a huge difference for me just to hear somebody say that because mm. all I had read about it was it was hopeless. And now that wasn't the guy that, that eventually had me recover, but he gave me a lot of hope. And, um, yeah. Mm. Hope is an important thing without hope. We do nothing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, well, look, uh, I guess my last thing I want to say to you is uh, congratulations on your recovery. Thank you very much, Dan. Well done. Um, yeah. We always talk about, um, you know, uh, having the right tools and the right options and the right information and knowing how to do it. But, you know, the number one thing about recovering is something that you did and that is took action. So I want to congratulate you for stepping up in life and saying, damn, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so well done. And, uh, and thank you so much for sharing the insights in this interview. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. Very, very uh, if I have a minute. Yeah. Uh, I just want to express once again my gratitude to you. Sure. Um, the, the, the program is, uh, you know, it's brilliant. It's so well designed. So much care uh, went into it, and um, you know, uh, for 17 years is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> and so, uh, I just I can't express my gratitude to you enough. And the fact that you have walked through this fire uh, gives uh, credence to everything that you share with people. So, mm. Thank well you. You're welcome, uh, Colin. Thank you very much for saying it. And you know, um, seeing people here, you know, that's the, that's my whole motivation. You know, yeah. um, so I love doing these interviews because and and seeing people succeed because that's what keeps me going. And you know, that's the whole reason for doing it. So yeah, uh, yeah. fantastic. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. And like I guess if you forgot anything or you got any other questions, I'm always available. Cheers. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care. Cheers.